WBC Prez, Mauricio Suleiman spoke with ESPN and he talked to Team Golovkin. They weren't particularly happy that Canelo was allowed a voluntary defense for his next fight and he's moving to super middleweight. Stay tuned. Boxing Ego here. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon on the top of your screen to get notified when the latest new content drops. One. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang gang, notification gang, Please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats channel donations, the Venmo donations, and the Patreon family. We work, and now it's Friday to close the week. There was some big boxing news. The biggest star in boxing, Canelo Alvarez, fresh off the heels of a, a tough fight, a good fight with Gennady Golovkin, where he was victorious. He captured Golovkin's middleweight titles. It was announced by Canelo himself on his verified social media that he's moving up to super middleweight 168 pounds to fight a wba regular champion rocky fielding of the uk now obviously this news spread this was you know viral a lot of people my video has over 20,000 views in you know less than 10 hours right so the news spread and i guess obviously got back to team golovkin and Mauricio Suleiman did an interview or spoke with ESPN Deportes. This is what he says. He says, Gennady Golovkin feels left out, and I'm very sorry about that. I just read a message from him. You have to understand that boxing is a stage. If the fight is very good, then another one is demanded. But they had a war, and I do not think it's something that should happen immediately. There was a message from Tom Loeffler, Golovkin's promoter. The message is not negative simply they expected that we would have voted for a direct rematch right and what he's referring to is they had in kiev ukraine they had this big annual wbc convention they usually go somewhere really nice and exotic and they give all of the you know the orders and the upcoming fights and it's a ceremony you get the champions coming out like the sean porters and whoever's the wbc champion and I made some videos about it. They ordered Sean Porter, Keith Thurman. They want Broner to fight Lenadas. You know, it doesn't mean these fights absolutely will happen just because they're ordered. Because uh, you had Luis King Kong Ortiz. They ordered Dillian White to fight him. You know, if the guys want to compete and challenge Deontay Wilder to get closer to that number one spot, you know, that's what they wanted him to do. And that fight still hasn't happened. They're kind of going back and forth now on social media for December. So let's see if they actually fight Luis King Kong Ortiz and Dillian White. But one fight in the middleweight division that got ordered is Jamal Charlo, who is the middleweight WBC interim champion interim so they have he has a version of the belt right you know there's a lot of belts in boxing he's the interim champion and they ordered jamal charlo to fight gennady golovkin who's coming off his first pro loss right and canelo was given a voluntary defense so his belt is secure even he doesn't have to fight anyone particular then canelo announced via again his social media that he's moving up in weight eight pounds to 168 to compete there it looks like he wants to be a three or four division i forget exactly how many weight classes he's traveled up but he, he's trying to become a multi-weight division champ and you know the options were realistically uh you had daniel jacobs who's fighting for a title against circuit Devrancheco ibf title this month either october or november you have um october 20th demetrius boo boo andre who's fighting maybe billy joe saunders but he just failed a drug test so they might sub him out and strip him of his wbo title and if that's the case it would likely go to the another the person ranked behind andre so andre and the guy from namibia walter the african fighter and they would fight for the vacant now vacated if they strip billy joe saunders the vacated title right so a lot of guys are booked up. Jamal Charles is about the only one that I don't know his actual next opponent, but via his Twitter, he says he's also fighting in December. It just hasn't been announced. So 
it looks like you know guys are booked up canelo's moving up it's a stay busy fight after two tough fights and he, he is stepping out of his comfort zone in my opinion by moving up to fight anybody at 168 you know and if it was so easy then more fighters would just do that hey i need to stay busy fight let me fight this regular champion or this champion you know eight pounds higher than where i currently fight you know so it is you're flexing your weight it does take something to do that but i fully expect canelo to go back down in 2019 because i don't see him staying up there and fighting jose uzcategui's and caleb smith those guys are a lot taller um you know long reach and stuff like that guys have power punch. it just it didn't i don't think 168 would be a good fit for canelo anytime soon you know like just to permanently stay there and he just really got to middleweight so bottom line is it looks like golovkin and team they're bummed out because they were pushing for the wbc to side with them and order an immediate canelo versus gennady golovkin trilogy but that didn't happen so that's what Suleiman is talking about he says golovkin feels left out <laughs> he feels left out because he got ordered to fight charlo and then canelo is the a side so he's doing what he wants he gets a voluntary defense and golovkin is stuck fighting a monster like jamal charlo you know and he knows that he might not get this third monster payday if he can't get past charlo so that's what it sounds like to me you know i'm not saying triple g has no shot versus charlo but you know i think he was looking forward to more of a direct route to canelo and you know to be honest i'm i'm happy the wbc did this you know let's get some order because you look at it canelo love him or hate him he's challenged himself throughout his career right he's moved up multiple weight classes he fought floyd mayweather at age 23 i mean these are factual statements edison Lada tried to upstage him so he fought him you know he fought a legend like miguel Cotto. you know he moved up from 154 when he last fought liam smith and he moved up to 164.5 so he fluctuated his weight to fight on a mexican holiday or mexican american holiday um Seco de Mayo weekend he fought Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. to see what they could come up with the fight stunk you know but it really wasn't because of Canelo it was because Chavez Jr. you know when he laces him up he don't know what Chavez Jr. is gonna do you know so nobody really expected Chavez Jr. to look that poorly you know but that's just what happened so he was full and ready to fight Chavez Jr even at his best so you know these are the marks of a true fighter then after you know he had tried to make up some ground because he vacated his belt to Golovkin and you know he probably picked out some things in Golovkin's more recent fights Daniel Jacobs and Kelbrook where he, he he stood his ground and said you know I could beat this Golovkin dude you know and then they made the fight the first fight was controversial a lot of people had Golovkin winning some people had Canelo winning some people said it was rightfully a draw but it was ruled a draw then he comes back and he fights Golovkin again. He does better, has a, a better game plan, marks Golovkin's face up like the subways in Harlem, you know, more aggressive, walks him down. Totally different game plan to, to what he did in the first fight. You know, so I think all things considered, he, you know, he's he's messing with his weight and fluctuating his weight. I'm not mad at the, the Rocky Fielding. Meanwhile, Golovkin has fought in the same category, the same weight category in or around since the amateurs you know and even when there's opportunities at 168 either the fights didn't materialize or he wanted to pick and choose so as far as i'm concerned um for the people getting mad at um rocky fielding fight canelo's like cherry picking or picking off what they believe to be a weak champion golovkin was trying to fight Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. at 168, but he didn't want to fight Andre Ward at 168. So what is really the difference? He was down to fight Carl Froch, who lost to Andre Ward at 168. So again, I ask you, new media, what is the difference? How is it cherry picking if Canelo fights what people consider the weaker champion eight pounds up, but Golovkin was going to do the same thing? And, you know, I think the Carl Froch fight would have been good, but that's also a guy that lost to Andre Ward. So Andre Ward was with it. I talked to him, you know, he was down to fight against Triple G. He even called him Little G. And he's like, you know, if they're not going to fight, then I don't have nothing else to talk about. You know, he, he put it out there. They were trying to get him at a catch weight of 164. And he's like, no, we're not doing all that. You know, 
trying to act like, oh, Andre Ward has legal problems outside. So, you know, what are we really talking about? You know, and that's what's wrong with boxing is a lot of people point the finger like, oh, look at Canelo. Look, he's doing this. And then some of your favorite fighters are doing the same thing, if not worse, you know. So I see why Golovkin feels left out because and on top of all of that, Canelo is younger with a better resume than Golovkin. You know, the best names on Golovkin's resume, I'm not trying to sound harsh, but the best names to me are Canelo, two fights, and Daniel Jacobs. By far, those are the best names. And to me, he hasn't convincingly won those fights. You know, I would say he won the first fight with Canelo, but then how did you do worse in the rematch? You know, Floyd Mayweather, he fights Castillo and he shows the adjustments in the second fight. You know, tough first fight, second fight, easy to determine who won, right? Same thing with the Maidana, you know, so usually you see the, the more skilled guy pull away in a rematch because you have all that time to think, watch tape and adjust. So, you know, like I said, I've been saying at New Media, I think the walls are closing in on Gennady Golovkin. I think he wants more of a direct route to the, the Canelo paycheck. And another thing that's it's almost laughable, the hypocrisy is Team Triple G. They also got um, very very descriptive calling fighters in boxing businessmen like Floyd Mayweather for fighting Conor McGregor knowing he would fight Conor McGregor if he was going to get the type of money Floyd got you know because if you're willing to fight Kell Brook for five million dollars then why the fuck wouldn't you fight a bigger Conor McGregor for more than that you know Floyd Mayweather made I think he got 100 million guaranteed or 80 million guaranteed for that fight so of course you know so it's, it's a lot of finger pointing and it just didn't particularly work out for Golovkin like to get a third trilogy fight straight away. And to me, I don't think we needed the immediate rematch, but I don't think we need a trilogy right away. Let 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 Golovkin fight Charlo and then the winner will more than um, warrant a, a, either a rematch or a fight with Canelo straight up. You know, Charlo's looking for his shot. They put one more obstacle, one more roadblock in front of him. You know, let's see Triple G because, again, as far as I'm concerned, Triple G's resume has consisted of, of kind of light touches. Either he couldn't get fights or they didn't. They fell apart at negotiation or whatever. But those names aren't on it. Canelo has names on his resume. He has Mayweather and Cotto, who are first ballot Hall of Famers, you know, and he beat one of them convincingly. And that was Cotto. You know, Triple G, the best names on his resume. He doesn't have any Hall of Famers that he's beat convincingly on his resume. You know what I'm saying? So why not go through this last little test? So, you know, I'm, I'm good with it. And then if you are what you say you are, you know, and you're ready for a Canelo fight, beat Charlo. You'll get a ton of credit. He's undefeated. Plus, it's a good thing for Charlo because people want to see if he can take a punch and what he's going to be like at, at 160. So, you know, we'll see. We'll wait to see what Team Golovkin says. But like I, I mentioned, I think the walls are closing in for Team Golovkin. I think Golovkin's kind of looking towards like an exit strategy and retirement. So he wanted that advance. You know, he wanted that payday advance to get straight to Canelo in a trilogy fight. And then the WBC threw a monkey wrench in that plan because they said, yo, it's not that simple. You know, so you they want him to fight Charlo. So, you know, it's just it's, it's not looking good from what Team Golovkin has said they've been all about. They said they want to be undisputed, but then you allow the IBF to strip you of your belt rather than facing Derevchenko when Canelo failed two drug tests, you know, and instead you opted to fight Vonis Matarosin because to me, Vonis Matarosin was a fight for you to get that training camp out of your system everybody knew you would win the fight because he's coming off a two-year layoff and a loss he even came back he had gray hairs and stuff like he's in looper or some shit he looked he like you know physically look older um moving up from 54 yes an olympian but i mean it don't matter if you're olympian or not if you ain't fought in two years and you're moving up in weight and coming off a, a loss you know meanwhile golovkin just had a fight with daniel jacobs and then canelo and had more activity than you you know so it seems like golovkin doesn't want to he doesn't want like a risky fight to mess up his bag that's why it sounds like he's upset with with the wbc's decision because he wanted to instantly get a, a canelo fight but the thing is he wasn't the a side because the a side would have never signed on to fight canelo without a rematch clause as champion 
but he was so desperate to fight you know to chase and pursue the money fight that you know obviously his team didn't um they couldn't negotiate that you know i think if i'm not mistaken they negotiated a one-way rematch clause you know so if you really want to just say you know you could have just said and and see that's what i'm saying i i really feel like tom loffler and team golovkin they they've made some errors in in their decision making i don't see why you wouldn't have your champion with the rematch clause under any circumstance because if you think about it after the first fight there was controversy that really made canelo look worse than gennady golovkin you know because I think the the general consensus was Triple G either won the fight and was robbed or, you know, that he, he did enough to win, whatnot. And Adelaide Bird's scorecard was atrocious. So to me, I know Canelo's the A-side, but there was still more pressure on him to fight. You know what I'm saying? So I think Team Triple G should have played that differently. I, I wouldn't have told my fighter to sign on unless there was a two-way rematch clause because you're the champion so you're risking all three of your belts or whatever he had after the ibf stripped him and you know canelo has a chance at your belts but things like this come up and now you now you have to you're on canelo's watch you know Hugh Blow, you on canelo's watch and he can determine if he wants to give you a trilogy you know the wbc can determine if you have to go through charlo first to get canelo so they that's that's their bad that's just smart business from golden boy and team canelo they gave you a one-way ticket you know a chance at your belt and you don't have a chance to get your belts back you know this is business one-on-one you don't get what you're you're worth you get what you negotiate and you know to me that was an error in judgment to do that because the pressure would have been on canelo because who is he gonna fight if he didn't clear up the draw with golovkin right he could have fought David Lemieux. People would have been like, why are you fighting David Lemieux? Spike O'Sullivan. Or he would have had to fight a monster like Daniel Jacobs or Jamal Charlo, you know, if he wasn't going to fight Golovkin. So chasing that bag and chasing that major payday, they didn't think about things like this. Now Golovkin, like I said, the room's getting smaller. The walls are closing in because at this point, now you got to earn a trilogy fight with Canelo. He's off doing what he wants. You know, most people aren't considering Rocky Fielding to be much of a threat, even though he's at the higher weight. So he's getting his voluntary and the WBC told you what to do. And that's to face a monster to get back in line and cr and climb back up that ladder to face Canelo. So now it's like, what do you do? You know, Canelo's in a good space. He's sitting pretty because if he gets past this December fight, you know, he's going to be more confident if he has to face Daniel Jacobs or Charlo because he's fighting a tall guy at a more advanced higher weight so if he can get past that you know that will i'm not saying rocky fielding fights like jacobs or charlo because he doesn't but at the very least it is readying him for a tall opponent and he'll be able to practice and try little things that he learns in camp versus if you were just getting in there with charlo straight away and jacobs those guys are already ready right now they're in their physical primes and stuff and they have experience so you're going to have to bring your A game and you can't make a mistake with with Canelo fighting Rocky Fielding. You can, you you know, from what I've seen in Rocky Fielding, you have more opportunity to make a mistake without paying for it than if you were to fight Charlo and make a mistake or Jacobs and make a mistake or Demetrius Andre to make a mistake. So, you know, to me, Canelo's kind of sitting pretty. It's Triple G. He's going to have to fight Charlo or you know retire or say guess what i'm moving to super middleweight too but those things will make him look bad if he opts not to fight charlo if he leaves the division or if he suddenly retires you know you can't get your way so you retire because triple g's team this whole time they were complaining about Cotos and sergio martinez and felix Sturm and guys didn't want to fight him now the middleweight division is more stacked than it has been in years you know and all this comparison to bernard hopkins resume and stuff like that you you're not even fighting the similar names but now there's names like that where you can't beat his record now because you just lost to canelo but you can do stuff for your legacy so again it's gonna be real interesting to see what's decided 
my thoughts make sure you smash the like button as always hate comment and subscribe to next videos ego sign and all so if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel you can show your appreciation by going to the paypal donate button or the youtube support button and you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video much more to come thank you guys for your support boxing ego the future of boxing